neutral density grad filters. Now what on earth is that? Neutral density means there's no colour and it is a dark filter, but the grad means it has a gradation, there's a transition halfway through the filter into a clear patch. Tom, can I borrow one for sure. a tick? So I can show the good people, there, there we go, you. look. Tom's got one here. And as you can see, there's a dark area, and then it fades through here into a sort of into a clear area. And what you do is you put the darker area over the sky, or the area you want to darken down. It need not necessarily just be for the sky. You could use it for other things, but in this case, it's sky. Let me show you what I mean. Let's just pop this. Let's see if we can give a moody sky over Mr. Mackey. Let me see what happens as I pull this down. Here we go, you see that sneaking in? There's like a gray, a darker sky coming down over Tom. Mm -hmm. Now use carefully in the landscape, this can make an enormous difference. Unfortunately, the sun's just, got, just gone in, which is whatever happens when you and I get together exactly. and try yeah. and do anything, yeah. isn't it? But look, Tom, here we go. Let me hand this over to you, because you're the master. You're gonna get a shot, say, of the windmill. So talk us through what you'd do. Okay, normally what I would wanna do is even out the exposure. Because you can see we've got this really bright sky dark foreground. So by putting this in the slot in the holder, I'll just bring this down over the sky just above the horizon line. Mm -hmm. Now if we had a nice bright sunny day, that mill would be lit nicely and I would probably go to a soft gradation. Which Let me show you the difference. <clears throat> so what you have is some, this filter which I just showed you on Jane's camera has got a, uh, a like a hard line. The gradation is quite severe. Okay, there we can see the difference between the two gradations. It's a big okay. difference. Yeah. Now, in this instance, we're gonna, I'm going to show you the hard gradation because it's going to be more evident. And why okay. would you not do it with a soft one on, on, in these conditions? Okay, in these conditions, you know, it's really flat uh, lighting. So we really want to accentuate those clouds to bring them out a little bit more. So Got it's you. not going to be so... So this wouldn't yeah. be quite so severe. That's right. But in this condition, we're going to get a bit of a black line on the blades of the windmill. That's right, yeah. Okay, which we wouldn't have with a softer grad, but you've got to do that in more powerful lighting. Okay. okay. So the trick with using, using these is that you have to come down just above your horizon line. And depending on the aperture that you're using, say if you're using a small aperture, that transition is going to be more evident, isn't it? Yeah, because with a smaller aperture, you've got a, a much, much deeper depth of field. It means what's close to the lens is more in focus. So that, that transition effect will appear more severe. So Mike, what I normally do is bring it down just over the horizon line and then back it off just a tad, okay? Mm. You can also check this in your depth of field preview. So mm -hmm. I'll just push that button and I can see that that's just in the right spot. Okay. Got it. Okay. Okay, now if we take a picture. So is there anything special you need to do with exposure with this kind of thing? The exposure is going to be worked automatically because you're using the matrix metering in this. Okay. It's going to see that you've darkened down the sky and it's bringing these the exposure values from your foreground, your sky, and it's averaging, averaging these all out, okay? <laughs> okay, so what you're saying is that if somebody's just beginning with this stuff, they could easily be using uh, an aperture priority or shutter priority. The camera will work it out. You don't have to know all about the manual settings to use one. That's right, yeah. Okay, cool. okay. so you've taken the so, shot. Okay, we've done the shot, and now you can see we've got this really great moody sky. That has now. given a really yeah. moody sky, actually. Can okay. you take one with the filter out, just so yeah. we can show folks okay. the difference? Yeah. Now, you can see the foreground, you can hardly see any detail. Yeah. The sky's washed out. Yeah. Okay, but by putting that back in, it evens the contrast range out in the scene. There we go. And because the camera is seeing a darker sky, it's giving slightly more exposure, which yeah. brings up the foreground, the foreground at the same time. Precisely. And that's really all there is to a, a, gra a graduated filter, it's isn't it? It's not that difficult. Yeah. 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 So if you want to have a go with filters, this is a really great place to start because they're not complicated and that really is all there is to it. When you buy a Lee Grad filter, you also get a, you, you get a holder so that uh, you can slide like the filter that. up and down. You don't screw it on the front, you can move that gradation about. You just buy the adapter ring according to the lens that you're using. Yep. So you screw that on and it just nicely clips on. Easy. Isn't he smooth? <laughs> You're getting good at this, Tom. Yeah, oh, no, you are, you are, no. So there you go, grad filters. That's about all there is to say about them. They're great, they make a difference. If you want to play with filters, it's a great place to start. Mm -hmm.